Welcome everyone, my name is Becky and I like to read. I hope you guys had a great Christmas if you celebrated Christmas. I cannot believe we are so close to 2023. I need to get my butt in gear and like plan some stuff for 2023. One of the things I would like to do is I would like to travel to more indie bookstores. Some of my favorite videos that I love filming, editing, and uploading are my bookstore adventure vlogs and I will have that playlist of all my bookstore adventures linked down below if you want to go watch them. But I love going to indie bookstores. Am I the greatest at filming while I'm there? No. Because A, I film on my phone. B, I sometimes forget to film. <laughs> because I get so caught up in just looking around the store. Three, I'm a very shaky person, so my footage is sometimes really shaky. So is it the best quality? Absolutely not. But it's fun for me to go to these different bookstores and show you guys what they look like and share my opinions on them and share the books that I get from them. So for today's video, I thought it would be fun to look back and tier rank the 19 different bookstores that I have visited between December 2021 and December 2022. I only have three tiers to put these in. The top tier is I would go back. I loved these bookstores. If I were ever in this area again, I would 100% hit them up again. The second tier is these bookstores are worth visiting. If it's your first time in these locations, I would definitely recommend hitting them up for a first time visit. They aren't the best, but they were worth going to while I was there. And the third tier is eh, but if you're a book lover and you're in the area, and you need some books or you just want to hit a bookstore they're there these are bookstores that i didn't feel a real welcome atmosphere while i was there or they're very niche bookstores so first up is posman's books my sister my friend yami and i went to new york city last year around christmas time and we hit up some bookstores posman's was one of them this is a bookstore that i think i would definitely go back i don't know if i would go back to this specific location because i do know they have about three different locations but I liked the selection that they offered. I thought it was a very clean, a very organized bookstore with a lot of different options. I thought the staff was very welcoming and very friendly. So I would definitely go back to A. Posman's books. That same day, we also hit up The Strand. And The Strand is a very iconic New York City bookstore. This was my second time visiting The Strand. It was my friend Yami's first time. I personally would rank The Strand in the second tier of it's definitely worth visiting if it's your first time there. If it hadn't been for my friend Yami not have ever been there, I personally wouldn't have gone back. The Strand is a very large, they have a huge selection of books. I just don't feel like their layout is that great. I've never really felt welcomed by their staff when I ask them questions. They're not the most helpful of individuals. They're layout isn't the best in my opinion. They don't have the best selection of romance books, as which is what I usually go in there to look for. So it's just not a place where I would go back repeatedly to. But if it's your first time in New York, I definitely recommend checking it out because it is a staple within New York City. Staying in my state, New Jersey, there were a few bookstores that I visited this year. First up is the Asbury Book Cooperative in Asbury Park, New Jersey. I would put this in the third tier. Eh, it's okay. It's a very cute bookstore. I liked the layout of it. I thought they had some good selections as far as diversity goes. It just doesn't have a very big selection of books to choose from. They did have like this massive Colleen Hoover like set up right when you walk through the door, which seems sort of out of place because you have all of these very like diverse lesser known books with like a couple super popular ones pushed in between but then you walk in the door and there's this huge Colleen Hoover display it it just seemed very weird um it's understandable she sells books they're popular books but just for the vibe of the store it just seemed a little out of place the next one is the book garden which is this a very large used bookstore i would put this in the second tier it's it's worth visiting if you're in the area took me by surprise just how big it was the woman who was working there she was very helpful it's pretty organized and clean and you're sure to find something there to purchase the next bookstore is one that I continuously go to, and that is the Book Trader of Hamilton. 
I go here because it is the closest bookstore to me that takes books for store credit. However, that being said, I would put it in the third tier of eh. You're not going to miss anything if you pass it by. This bookstore is relatively small quarters. Like, it's a very long bookstore, so it has a lot of books in it, but it is very crowded. The walkways are not very wide. There are books stacked in boxes on the floor. There are books shoved on the shelves willy-nilly. She does try to keep it somewhat organized by genre, and I want to say she tries to keep it organized by author last name, but it's not really. If you're looking for a place that has romance books, this is the place for you. Huge selection of romances from all genres. I don't particularly love the atmosphere of the place. I also don't particularly think the lady who works there is the nicest and the most welcoming. I go in there pretty regularly and I stay in there for an exceedingly long amount of time and every time she has no clue who I am. <laughs> it's one that I reluctantly go back to because I don't have another place around me that will take books in exchange for store credit, but it's not a place that I'd be like, oh my god, you must stop here. There is only one bookstore that I have visited in Pennsylvania within the last year, which surprises me because Pennsylvania is just right across the river. You think I would go to more. And that is the commonplace reader. I would put this one in the top tier. I go back there because I like the atmosphere of it. It's very clean. It's very welcoming. The people who work there are always very helpful and nice. They have good attitudes. They have a good selection of books. They are always willing to order books if you don't see something in store. They also have like a discount program where the more you buy from them, you can get a free book the more you spend with them. I definitely think if you're in the Yardley, Pennsylvania area, you should check out Commonplace Reader. I then went to Georgia and South Carolina. My best friend and I had never been to Georgia and we hadn't seen each other in a good two years, so we met up in Georgia. We also went to South Carolina, which is where I went to Buxton Books. I would put Buxton Books in the second category of it's definitely worth visiting if you're in the area. It's a very cute little bookstore. The people who worked there were very nice. It's very clean. It's a very welcoming atmosphere. And I felt like their book selection was pretty good. I then met my friend Jessica for the first time and we went to Books on Bay, which is a very niche bookstore. They focus on older books, antique books, collector's books. Eh, if you're a reader and you are in Savannah, you should definitely stop in if you like antique older collector books. It was a very clean and organized bookstore. The staff was very helpful. They have a really cute logo, but it's just not one that I would ever go back to. I then visited East Shaver Booksellers while I was in Savannah, and I would put this in the top tier of I would definitely go back if I were in Savannah. I loved this bookstore. I walked in, it had a wide variety of books, lots of new release books that I just felt like, yes, this is my place. I loved the vibe of it. I loved the layout of it. It had different rooms for different genres. I thought the staff was very helpful. They also sell things other than books. So, you know, there's something you could find for anybody, I feel like but I would definitely go back here. I then went on my dream vacation to Edinburgh, Scotland. I loved it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got to do that this summer. Oh, it was so great. I hit eight bookstores while I was here. So first up is McNaughton's. This one I would put in the last tier of eh. If you're there and you like books, you might want to visit it. It is another niche bookstore. I feel like they sell antique, older, collector edition books, which as the same thing with Books on Bay, wasn't really my jive. Did I buy books from there? Yes, I bought one. Did I regret it? Yes, I did. Um, so if that's your jam, you might really enjoy this. However, right next to McNaughton's, sort of connected, is Type Wronger. This one I would put in the second tier of definitely worth visiting if you're there. These two bookstores are connected and I think the little alcove in which they are situated is so freaking cute, so Instagram picture worthy. I thought the guy who worked there was super helpful. He was very engaging with the customers, asking them questions. It's a smaller bookstore, so it doesn't have like the best variety of books, but I felt like the books that were in there 
they were different and they were local and I found books there that I really wanted to read. One of them I have already read and absolutely loved. And I just thought it was a cute little place to be. So if you're in Edinburgh, I definitely think this is worth stopping at. Just down the street from those two bookstores is Topping and Company. This one I would put in the top tier. I would definitely go back here. It is a very big bookstore. I want to say two, two floors, I think. I only went on two floors. A huge variety of books to choose from. I loved the layout of it. It had different rooms with different setups and genres and things. The staff was very engaging and helpful. It was very bright. They had like little nooks where you could sit and read. And I just thought it was a very welcoming place to be. So I would definitely go back here. I then hit Waterstones for the first time, which is sort of comparable to the Barnes & Noble here in America. This one I would put in the second tier of it's worth visiting if you're in the UK. I didn't particularly love anything about Waterstones. I went in there thinking that I'd be able to find something very specific and I wasn't able to. The staff was pretty helpful in answering my questions. Uh, they do have a cafe which is quite cozy and it's got like this darker tones to it that I really thought was cool. But I just don't think it's a bookstore that I would go back to if I was ever in the UK. I then went to a Lighthouse Books. This is one that I would put in the second tier as well. It's worth visiting if you're in the area. It's a very bright bookstore when you walk in. However, it didn't have like the most welcoming atmosphere to me. The person working there wasn't super welcoming or helpful or engaging in any sort of way. The book selections weren't the best. They did have a romance section, which is something I praised it for because that was hard to find when I was in Edinburgh. But the selection was pretty small. They did have a larger, like, middle grade children's room that was completely separate from the other side of the store, which I like. So it's definitely worth visiting, but I don't think it's one that I would ever go back to. I then went to Blackwell's, which wasn't too far from Lighthouse Books, and I would put this in, definitely go back. I would definitely return to Blackwell's. I loved this bookstore. It's very bright when you walk in. It had such a great selection of books. I, it took me a long time to find just one book to buy at this bookstore because I could have found many. They also have a cafe which is very cozy. This Blackwell's that I went to actually had an entire room just dedicated to like local Scottish authors and stories which I thought was really interesting as well. So I would definitely return here. This was probably one of my favorites from this vacation. I then went to Armchair Books. I would put this in the last tier of eh. It's another very niche bookstore. They focus on used book, older book collector's books. Their logo, one of my favorite logos. It's a little dragon sitting in an armchair. However, not a very inviting place, very dark, very cramped, not a lot of room to wander around. It wasn't super organized either. And the last bookstore that I visited in Scotland was Portobello Bookshop in Portobello Beach. This is outside of the city center of Edinburgh, but it was closer to where we were staying. This is one I would put in the second tier of definitely worth visiting if you're in that area. It's a very cute, very bright bookstore. The people who worked there were very welcoming. It's just had a welcoming atmosphere. It's right next to a cute little coffee shop as well. They had a good selection of books to choose from. And I just liked the overall vibe of this bookstore. So if you're ever in that area, I definitely recommend checking it out. I then visited a couple bookstores in Massachusetts while I was there. The first being Copper Dog Books. I would put this in the top tier of definitely I would go back to this store. It is a very cute little bookstore situated on this street with a bunch of different other cute little coffee shops and stores you can pop into. It sells things other than books, which again is a good place to go if you need gifts or anything like that. The staff, one of the most helpful and inviting staffs I have ever walked into a bookstore to encounter. So helpful. They were so engaging and it was just a cute, well-organized little store. I thought they had a good selection of books to choose from, even if their book selection wasn't the largest. But just the atmosphere of the place was so cute. And the last bookstore I visited was Wicked Good Books in Salem. This one I will put at the last tier of eh. 
If you're in Salem and you're a book lover, you might as well pop in. I never really feel welcomed in there. It's not a very welcoming, inviting atmosphere. I don't feel like they have the best selection of books to choose from. Every time I go in there, I feel like I have to buy something because I, I'm a book lover and I love supporting indie bookstores. But it's just never like a place that when I walk in, I'm like, ah. Oh. So those are the 19 bookstores that I have visited in the last year. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until my next video, read something from an indie bookstore for me. Bye.